Hi, my name is Guy Moran and I'm a Senior Lecturer in Arts and Cultural Management within the School of Culture and Communication at the University of Melbourne. And this bite-sized lecture concerns two key questions that are important uh, within the field and they are what is art and what is art for? According to John Kerry, who's a literary critic, these are all modern questions that could, have, could not have been asked prior to the late 18th century, as most pre-industrial societies didn't even have a word for art as an independent concept. And the term work of art as we use it would have been baffling to all previous cultures, including the civilizations of Greece and Rome and of Western Europe in the medieval period. In most previous societies, arts management and the creative industries wouldn't have existed conceptually because art was not produced by a separate cast of people labelled artists who needed managing, but was spread throughout any particular community as a universal human practice. And this practice involved the behavioural tendency of making special. You can see my four-year-old daughter's uh, drawing in the background uh, here. Um, which is an example of that. If you watch uh, young children um, with, with crayons and a piece of paper, it's amazing. Um, this idea that it's a, a universal human practice that uh, is uh, evident across all human societies and that involves this um, process of making special. According to influential philosopher Kant, artistic genius discovers the new and by a means that cannot be learnt or explained. The work of Kant is relevant here for understanding the basic aesthetic assumptions that informed the separate concepts of art and artist that arose over the last 200 years in the West. Essentialism in this context refers to the belief that there is a universal or absolute essence to a work of art, and in the case of Kant, beauty which is informed by the logic that everyone will agree with us when we call something a work of art or refer to an object's beauty. While according to Kant, art and beauty ha had an essence that, that should be able to be universally understood, art and beauty were also mysterious. They couldn't have been understood that well or even managed that easily because they are mysterious, according to Kant. In contrast to essentialism, relativism involves the belief that deciding whether something is a work of art is relative to one's individual perspective, societal position, class, race, gender, and any other factor that may influence one's understanding of the work of art, and also the context in which it's located. Associated with postmodernism and the new humanities, relativism arose partly out of a deep distrust of essentialism, which in the first half of the 20th century still informed the modernist paradigm. And this distrust arose partly in response to the many horrors of the 20th century, two world wars and the Holocaust amongst many other horrific events. And the way in which some of the ideologies that informed these events had, at their core, a belief in universal, absolute, and essential meanings. So the notion of relativism highlights the extreme uncertainty surrounding the artistic creativity that an arts manager is helping to facilitate and manage. And this is because in this paradigm, what makes something a work of art is simply that someone thinks that it is a work of art. And according to John Kerry, the answer to the question, what is a work of art, is that a work of art is anything that anyone has ever considered to be a work of art, though it may be a work of art only for that one person. Artistic contributions are often understood in one of two ways. First, that artistic creativity is beneficial in and of itself, otherwise known as art for art's sake. And second, that artistic creativity generates instrumental benefits. So when trying to understand what art is for, we can surmise here that it is sometimes simply for itself. At other times it's for making money, 
helping school students perform better in other subjects, strengthening democracy and increasing productivity in workplaces amongst the many other instrumental benefits that can be derived from participation in the arts. And uh, as you can see in this uh, drawing by my four-year-old daughter, uh, which looks like a rainbow creature with a carrot, but it's, it's an ice cream in the hand, knowing my daughter. Uh, the arts are a means through which uh, we achieve self-expression. They can be a means in and of themselves, exist for their own sake, arts for art's sake but they can also uh, be an instrument for other ends, such as um, performing well in other subjects in school or my, my daughter performing uh, well um, at kindergarten. Uh, so hope I've answered the questions and thank you very much.